Have you heard someone say, I need to get a star card? Maybe they need to get it for work. Maybe they need, it to, get, they need to get it for travel. And you probably wondered, well, what is a star card? Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with you what a star card is, um, why you would need a star card, and the process it takes to get a star card. I recently had to get a star card for my job. I need to be able to gain access to federal facilities such as the um, INEL site and the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation building um, in order to do my job. I did a lot of research on what I needed to do to, to um, get the star card, documents I would need, where I needed to go, questions I needed to ask, those kinds of things. Um, it is going to be the desired form of ID to get you into any kind of federal facility. Let's start first with what is a star card? In 2005, in accordance with the 9-11 Commission, the Real ID Act was passed. It set forth a minimum standards for the Real ID, also known as the star card. Um, according to the Department of Homeland Security's website, the Act prohibits agencies from accepting driver's license or ID cards not meeting those minimum standards. Um, all states are currently compliant and they have begun issuing the star card. The star card is not required um, and you can still get a standard driver's license or ID card. It just doesn't require those additional documents that the star card requires. Um, you can still do that at your, at your DMV or you can get that standard driver's license or ID card online. And minors under the age of 18 are not required to have a star card. Finally, it is a form of ID. Um, it will have a gold or black star up in the corner. And on the back, it's going to have a barcode that's encrypted with your information. Your name, your address, your date of birth, the stuff that's, that's on your card. Um, so now that you're familiar with what a star card is, let's talk about why would you need a star card? Um, the first thing is that the state-issued ID is not a government issue ID. It doesn't have the added security measures that um, a government issue ID may have, um, this, the documents and things that you may need to, to provide. The STAR card does have those enhanced um, security features, like I said, the barcode on the back um, or the um, smart card technology. Um, and again, like I said, you know, it is not required, but if you do not have the STAR card, you are going to be denied access to all federal facilities. Things like federal courthouses or the FBI building, um, nuclear power plants or military bases. And the main reason that you would need a STAR card is without it, you will not be able to fly commercially. You would be able to still fly commercially, however, if you had other acceptable forms of ID, such as a passport or a military ID. There is a deadline that you need to be aware of. Um, they were originally going to enforce the real ID um, in, on October 1st of 2020. But due to the COVID pandemic, they decided to extend that deadline until October 1st of 2021. You know, the government offices were closed so you couldn't go in and get it. Um, they wanna maintain social distancing. The deadline was coming up fast. So they decided that it was best to extend that. Um, but however, after that deadline, you will not be able to, of course, like I said, access the federal facilities or be able to fly. Um, once you've decided that you probably do need the star card, um, there's some, you know, some things that you're going to need to do. You need to have some required documents. Um, you want to make sure that you go through the process in plenty of time to, um, to meet that October 1st deadline, um, next year. And you want to beat the rush of everybody else trying to get that star card by the October 1st, 2021 deadline. So now let's go over how. How do you get the star card? You're going to need some documents, of course. The first document that you're gonna need is what they call the identity document. Um, a common form of an identity document is your birth certificate or a um, valid current passport will also work. Um, if you've changed your name, got married, got divorced, legal name change, you're going to also need to provide those additional documents, your marriage license, your divorce decree, or the court document that shows that you legally changed your name. You can order these documents through your Department of Health and Welfare um, at a very reasonable price. When I was looking in, into how I was going to order my documents, I needed my birth certificate, um, I needed my um, marriage license, and I needed my divorce decree. Um, I was looking at um, 
the Bureau of Vital Statistics website. And on that site, it was going to cost me almost $300 to get the documents that I needed. But on the state's health and welfare um, website, it only was going to cost me approximately $30 per document. So that was a huge saving. So that was the route that I chose to go. You must remember on those certificates or on those documents that you're going to, they need to be originals. Um, and they also need to have your state seal on them. Without them, they won't accept them. So just make sure that if the, your copy of your driver or your birth certificate, that, let's say you have at home, if it doesn't have that state seal on it and it's not an original, you're going to have to actually get a new one um, with those, those things on it to prove that they are legit, so to speak. Um, the second thing you're going to need is your Social Security number, which, of course, is on your Social Security card. Or you can use a W-2 um, as long as it has your nine-digit Social Security number listed on that W-2. One key thing to remember, though, is if your Social Security card is laminated, they will not accept it. So you'll need to um, acquire a new one if you happen to laminate it to keep it nice and neat as you've got it tucked into your wallet. The last thing that you're going to need, and that requires two documents, is going to be proof of residency. Your current valid ID or driver's license can work. Um, utility bills with your name and address can work. If you live in a place where all utilities are paid so you don't have a utility bill, um, you can use a credit card statement. You can go to your um, credit card statements website and you can actually print off the most current statement that you have and that will work. When I went to get my star card, I had to actually have two um, credit card statements and my driver's license. It, it required that extra one. Um, you can also find a list on your local DMV's website where um, it gives you a full list of what they will accept as proof of residency. Um, after you gather all of this information, now it's time to head on down to the Department of Motor Vehicles, which is the last step um, in getting your STAR card. Um, first, you do have to go in person. You cannot do this online. Unlike getting a standard ID or driver's license, which you can do online, um, you do have to be in person. They have to see you and they need to have your documents. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to call ahead for an appointment due to COVID-19. They are only accepting appointments to get into the DMV. Um, while you have them on the phone, you might want to ask them, you know, do I have the current right documents? Um, let them know what you have. They'll let you know if yes, you have all the right documents or if you need to bring some other additional documents with you in order to get your STAR card. Um, once you arrive at the Department of Motor Vehicles, the process really doesn't take that long. It takes about 15 minutes. They photocopy all of your information, you sign, they take your picture, and um, it really doesn't take too awful long. After they've reviewed all of your information, um, your documents and such, um, they will issue a temporary STAR card. It's that paper temporary ID that you get issued. Um, you'll receive your real STAR card in approximately two weeks via the United States Postal Service. But do keep in mind that the temporary card will not work even after October 1st of 2021 to get you access to those federal facilities or to fly. It has to be the hard one. It can't be that, that paper one. Um, they just will not accept it. So if you need it by October 1st, 2021, let's say you need to fly somewhere, you need to get into the federal building, you wanna make sure that you've given yourself plenty of time so that you've actually received the correct one in the mail um, so that you've had the correct form of ID in, a, in order to either get through security or to get into that federal facility. So like I said, it's, it's actually a simple process as long as you're prepared and you have all the information, the documents that you're going to need to get your STAR card. It's actually, it's quite a, a simple process. So today what we've done is I've discussed with you what a STAR card is, how it came to be, why you might need a STAR card, and of course, finally learned the process of how to get a STAR card, what documents you're going to need, where you need to go, timeframes, deadlines, um, that kind of stuff. And so now that you know why you might need a STAR card and how to obtain a STAR card, you just need to remember that that needs to be done, of course, before October 1st of 2021. Um, if you do have to get a STAR card, I wish you luck um, in finding all the stuff that you're going to need. Um, like I said, it's not really a hard process. It's actually quite simple um, as long as you have what, you, what they're requiring you to have to get the STAR card. I want to thank you so very much for your time, and you all have a nice evening.